So we call this our solar generator. Check out this beautiful place. In this episode, we leave Karajini National Park and make our way to the beautiful Kiara Pool, a stunning riverside camp, stopping briefly by Karatha. Good morning, good morning all. We have woken up to a cracker. Oh, good morning over there. I'm still in my pyjamas. You're still in your PJs, mate, eh? <laughs> What I want to show you guys this morning is something that's pretty relevant. I mean, everyone sort of suffers from this. Uh, at the moment, it's in July, so um, it's winter months. The sun is fairly low, so solar panels, we're not getting enough charge. We've been sitting here for about four days, and we've been pretty power hungry. A battery is pretty low. I think it's at about 40% or 41% this morning. Mind you, I'm saying low, even at 40%, we're still about 250 amps or 270 odd amps because we have 600 amps in there. It's just, the charge is just not keeping up at the moment with the amount of power we're using. Another reason why it's not keeping up is my panels are absolutely filthy up the top there. So I've actually got to get up there today and um, clean them all up. Um, they're just, a, they're, they're a mess. It can get as low as a 20% less efficiency um, by having dirty panels. So that probably doesn't help our situation as well. Battery's flat. So I want to show you how we charge our system when we're not just relying on solar. So we have a generator. It's not your conventional generator, as they say. Ta-da! So this is our generator. So we call this our silent generator, so we don't carry a generator as such. In the truck here, in the canopy, we have an Enerdrive system. We have twin 200 amp uh, BTEC batteries, so they're the new slimline ones that are tucked up and uh, behind the fridge here. As well as that system, we have a 3000 watt inverter and a 100 amp AC charger in one unit, in a combined unit. Um, we also have twin DC to DC chargers. So these are the 40 plus chargers. So they throw in anywhere from 45 to 50 amps while the truck is turned on running through the alternator. Um, so this is how we charge our caravan. So what I've gone and done is I've just gone and plugged your standard old 240 lead into the inlet into the caravan. So that's the standard inlet that you would plug as, you, as if you're plugging plugging into um, a caravan park. So you can see here, so we're at 86% 80, charge in here. Um, currently it's not doing too much. We've got some solar coming in. So we've got about 20, 21 amps coming in from the roof there through, through the solar. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch the truck on and show you guys the twin DC to DC chargers running. So I'll show you in a second. Let me charge the truck up, hang on. Okay, so I've just turned the truck on. You'll see in a second, so we got vehicle charge one and vehicle charge two so they're our twin dc to dc dc to dc charger so we'll just wait for them to fire up and then you'll see what sort of charge we've got coming in here uh inverter and everything is switched off at the moment so we've got nothing running here we go what's the blue coming in now so it's registering here we go so it's starting to fire up now there we go so there you go you can see right there so we've got 45 amps coming in from the one dc to dc charger and 45 amps coming in from the second dc to dc charger and then we have 6.5 amps coming in from solar so if we go back to the other screen here so in total we have 90 amps um, coming into the battery system so it's yeah so in about two hours that will be fully back to complete charge so this is where it gets a little uh, a little different so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch the inverter on which will send power from this lead all the way to the caravan doing that it will turn the ac charger on that's in the caravan so which is a 60 amp charger so i'll flick this on okay so you'll see the charge going down now because it's reverting back to the caravan so give it a second again for it to fire up inverter's turning on now there we go you can see we have a total loss in power now but with the car turning on we have a 60 amp charger in the van and this can charge up to about 90 amps that you saw so really speaking we're still going to be putting some charge into the car while the car is idling as well as charging the the caravan up we're going to go inside the van and see what's going on in there hey okay you got some clothes on what are you doing mate <laughs> he said i can't use the microwave so i'm melting the butter for my... oh only because i'm showing an experiment all right i'm melting the butter for my paleo banana bread all right let's go up here we will have a look in here. The AC charger is throwing in about 60, and then you've got the roof solar, which is about 25 amps coming in. So you add the 25 to the 60, and then take a little bit off because we're running a few things inside with lights and stuff as well. So we've got a total of 75.4 amps charging in now. So um, it's saying we have four hours to go, four hours and 30 minutes before it's fully charged. When the sun comes up a little bit more, the solar will throw a heat more in. So there we go. There's my uh, silent generator. Freaking cool, isn't it? I call it a silent generator because this is obviously a lot quieter idling than a, uh, you know, like a big 
Honda 2 or something, you know. They're a pain in the butt, they're noisy, and a lot of places you actually can't run them. This is it, and this car is quiet when it idles, hey. Standard, standard truck, so whisper quiet. A recap quickly. In the caravan, we have a 60 amp AC charger. So that AC charger will only turn on and start charging when we have an external 240 power plugged in. This is our 240 power, so pretend you've just plugged the lead into the van and then you've gone and put this into a 240 outlet in the house. When you turn the inverter on, it will send power to that AC charger and start charging at 60 amps. So essentially you're stealing 60 amps from the truck and putting it into the van. But the trick to this one is we're running twin DC to DC charges at 45 amps each. So that's about 90 amps. We're stealing 60 amps from here, but the alternator is throwing 90 amps back into here. We're literally charging this as well as charging the caravan as well. That's my little silent generator trick. Now I've just got to get my ass up onto that caravan and clean those solar panels so I essentially don't have to be doing this because I'm being a bit lazy at the moment. <laughs> Another hot tip. Always clean your solar panels. You know, we're off grid like this all the time. These systems are only as good as the amount of charge we're putting back into them. Solar panels is key. Make sure they're clean. You know, we're off grid at the moment. We're going down tons of dirt roads. And yeah, and then what makes it worse too is we get a little bit of dew. It's really cold at night. So we get a bit of dew and then water goes on there. You know, dirt and water doesn't go well. Efficiency drops so much. Yep, little hot tip. That's me. I'm going to go to the roof and uh, clean those panels now, hey? You're in the shadow, mate, so... I haven't got sunnies on. <laughs> We're spewing, we have to leave, but I think we've been here long enough. How long have we been here, actually? Dale's four nights and yeah. then here four nights, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're bummed. We've just had a relaxing time. It's been epic. Just a quick recap. Caragini, I would give yourself minimum of probably four days. You could do I'd it in three days. i say four nights. Yeah, four nights, sorry. Um, you can do it all in three days, but don't go rushing yourself. Spend some time out here. Maybe stay at Dale's or the Dale's Overflow for at least four nights and then come over to this side where um, Hammersley is and stay yeah. at the free camp across there. It is a beautiful place. And you could stay in this section for probably another. Well, there are other things to do other than just Hammersley. We just haven't had a chance to do them. You yeah. Can, there's, you can, there's lookouts and places to go. and Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's beautiful here. Definitely. It's, it's stunning. So we're out of here. We're going to head on the rail access road, the Rio Tinto one. Why are you in the shadow? Oh, there we go. Because I haven't got sunnies on. We're going to head on the access road now. We've got our permits like you guys saw. Um... So we're going to head along that. We're going to head to Millstream National Park. I think it's about 150 odd k. So we're giving ourselves about three hours to do it. It's all dirt road and trucks and all that. So we'll give ourselves Depends a bit if we of time. Get stuck behind a road train doing yep. 60. Yep. We're going to go to I think Stargazers is the campground out that way. We're going to go check that one out. So yep, we're out of here. Caragini, thank you so much. The Pilbara rocks. Um, let's keep going to the next spot, hey? Let's go. All right. Eh? We're heading north through the gorge. It's called Rio Tinto Gorge, but. It's a really narrow pass, so you've got to radio through the signs e either end of it. Heading north through the gorge. And you've had the radio on for a while to hear if anyone said that they're coming yeah, yeah. through. I think it's absolute madness that you don't have a UHF when you do this type of stuff. Just as a safety, give yourself a UHF. All right, let's go through. Steep descent, mate. Eh? Okay, so we've got about 300 k's of um, this dirt road in front of us. Some of it is a little bit corrugated, some of it not too bad. It's sort of a bit of all conditions, mate. As a golden rule, um, and something that you guys should probably do as well if you're doing this type of roads is just, I don't know, every half hour, every hour, I just sort of walk around and check everything. Um, I do normally do a walk around, check my tyres, even though I've got the gauges inside that tells me my pressures and the temperatures of the tyres, I still go out and just give it a visual check over. Just check on the back of the van, make sure, you know, all the accessories that are on the van are still bolted on. Everything's looking good. Just a quick visual sort of check over, maybe duck your head underneath, uh, make sure all your, your tanks and hoses and all that type of stuff haven't sprung a leak or rocks had hit them. Um, good thing about the Titanium Caravan, they've got rotor molded solid plastic tanks with all soft piping and brass fitting. So I don't have to worry about that too much. Again, with your truck or your car, check over everything, all of, um, accessories, bolt-ons, check them. I'm constantly checking my lights, you know, spotlights, bar, winches, all that type of stuff. The um, your, um, UHF antennas, 
just ge just a general quick once over just have a quick run around have a look at the car as a rule of thumb too which i uh which i do and big dog builds did when they um built the truck all suspension componentry like all your bolts your leaf um, nuts your, um, your u bolts all that type of stuff your shackles um, when you build it or if you're going to go do this type of stuff get a get yourself a white paint pen put some marks on the nut and on the part that it's bolted to so you can do a visual check over to see if any nuts have come loose or anything like that so that's a handy little tip as well i guess it's prevention over cure uh, prevention over fixing or whatever the bloody say i don't know what it is but keep that in mind and you know just check it every now and then so back on the road eh? Road. We're back on the bitumen, heading towards Millstream. Uh, Chris is outside, airing back up. Something I need to bring up here, and this is a hot little topic of mine, and something that I um, would you say issues? Maybe it's a bit of a safety thing for me. So we're cruising down this dirt road. We're doing about 70 or 80 k's an hour. Um, now I'm looking in my um, the rear vision camera on the caravan, and obviously all you can see is a bellow of dust out the back because you know there's eight wheels running across the dirt. Everything's going well, I can visually sort of see what's around me. And then all of a sudden I see a white Nissan Patrol up my butt of the caravan. So, two problems I see here. Number one, I had no idea he was there, could not see a thing, mate, I had, had zero idea. Number two, which is probably the biggest issue that I have, is for that guy's safety himself. So, he had to punch through all that dust, being totally blind, to get up near me where there was not where he was in a position where there was no dust um, absolutely a horrendously dangerous move to be doing you know he should have a probably had his headlights on so I could see you know visually see him from way back in my mirrors you know when there's headlights on a dirt road in the middle of the day you get a flicker of it and it pays your attention you can see what's going on there so I can either back my speed off um, to, so there's not so much dust or pull right over and pretty much come to a near stop so he's got a clear way around me and he can get going number two the punter had no UHF mate so there was zero way I could communicate with him or he could communicate with me if he had you know it, it's a $500 little purchase guys when you're traveling on roads like this um, it's worth its weight in gold you know he could have radioed through to me you know if he'd seen me go over a hill or around a corner when he was back off a little bit he would have seen I'm a caravan he could have gone hey buddy I'll make the caravan you know I'm coming up behind you and I would have gone yeah awesome bud no worries thanks for that I'll just pull right over I'll back my speed right off so you can come around me nice and safe and everyone's happy so Please guys, if you're traveling roads like this, either have a UHF or have headlights, or actually I run with both. I think it's critical to run your DRLs on or headlights on or whatever, as well as having a UHF. So um, yeah, it's, it's friggin' dangerous, man. Like you don't, don't underestimate these roads. There's, there's accidents all the time and people getting hurt or killed, mate, from, from dirt roads and, and dirt freeways because of just the simple little things, turning your headlights on or, or having a UHF. So. Yeah, guys, let's all be safe, hey? We're, we enjoy this beautiful country. We go to these remote areas because it's so rad, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of safeties in, involved in, in getting to these places. So please, please, UHF and, and, and headlights on a dirt road and we'll be all be happy, man, and we'll all be safe, so. We made it to Karatha. Surprise! Chris decided he did not want to um, drop tire pressures again. So we've come all the way to Karatha and luckily we found one unpowered site in one caravan park. Everyone else is booked out because it's a school holidays. We have arrived at, I think it's pronounced Kialrapul or Jones River, which is a little free camp. It's about 60 something kilometers out of um, Karatha. 
and we were going to get here early but Chris spent the morning washing the van completely he wanted to get rid of all the red dirt so we washed the van um, did a few bits and pieces in town and it's now one o'clock and there doesn't appear to be a lot of room here so Chris has just gone for a bit of a walk and hopefully there'll be some room down there otherwise I guess we'll be moving on to the next spot some mates have rolled in who are obviously also looking for a spot <laughs> so who knows we might get one just not close to the water it's kind of room in the middle it's a bit weird there's kind of room up there there's room just not with river views <laughs> well we made the executive decision to park up in the dirt and hopefully someone will leave tomorrow morning and we'll be able to go park up near the river so I guess that's um, something that's just part of life now that there are so many more caravans on the road. And as we say, do as we say, not as we do and get to free camps early. One o'clock is way too late in the day to arrive and expect a good spot. So here we are. We have ended up at one of the most beautiful little uh, free camps. I think I've come across in a long time. Hang on a second. Look at you with your little blanket down here. Look, look at this. So there are not many places where you can sunbake in a bikini while you're watching a campfire by a river. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we left Karajini. We went into Karatha. We did. We spent a couple of days there. Yeah. That was, um, oh, I'm going to sit down. down for a second. Coming into Karatha gave us enough time to catch up on some shopping. Some sure shopping. Some <laughs> shopping. Clean everything to get all the red dirt off it. You know how I am. I like to... Um, we cleaned the van so it was spotless. Not a trace of red dirt. Yeah. Oh, I think I got the trace off with my finger and then we went on a red dirt road. And the truck. I mean, yes, it's all good and well. And everyone goes, oh, why are you cleaning it? You know, dirt road tomorrow. But my theory is if I keep on top of it, it just won't stain and it won't build up and it won't just wreck everything. So He says, it's your body. Yeah. You wash your body going to get dirty the next day you don't I've, not shower because you're going to wash it again the i've next always day, right? been like that mate mountain biking motorbikes you know you, you you're going to go race or ride the morning i ended up washing it at five o'clock in the morning before i go to the track just to make sure everything's always clean and maintained so anyway we did all that okay. and then we ended up this amazing camp it's a stunning little it's joint really pretty yeah it's beautiful we've met some beautiful people that will join us shortly for uh, another campfire mm. but yeah it's this, actually a really busy little camp too yeah so because it is. of all the washing of the van and the car we didn't arrive here until one o'clock yeah um it was a bit late so we actually had to camp the first night up yeah away just from the off river the river a little bit and wait for some people to move so we could slot down yeah, to the river front a, a bit of etiquette not pull up like some people have pulled up like yeah, an hour ago and pretty much jammed themselves <laughs> behind like us so they're double parked yeah it's a, just that little bit of etiquette you know just three camps like this you're not here to camp on top of each other no you're not here Any to camp on top of each other but um yeah, stunning little place. This is a free camp as well, which makes it even better. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a farmer's land here on, on the creek. It's beautiful. Yeah. Stunning, isn't it? Mm. We've just been chilling here for a little bit, um, detoxing a little bit actually, like just getting off I've the camera. I've been forced to detox because my computer's had an issue, so no work for me. So I've been reading for all afternoon. Yeah, well, that could be another dilemma. So our plans are to head to Port Hedland tomorrow, um, catch up with Emma, our good friends from Caravan Coffs, who live there now. Hey, Em, we love you. And then stay there for a few days and then punch on to Cape Croydon and then um, 80 Mile and then Barnhill Station and then into Broome. Um, I've got to fly out for an exciting little... Oh, I can say that you now because it's it. going to be afterwards. So I'm flying to back to Brisbane to surprise my son for his 18th. So he doesn't think we're coming, which is really freaking cool. We've so got, We've got this whole scheme planned out. So we're going to film all these stories together around Barnhill Station and post them yeah. when Chris is actually flying back and when he's back in Brisbane. So his yeah. son Cooper's not going to know. Even having his, uh, his first beer with him. So we're going to cheese and we go, hey, buddy. And we're going to actually text it to him about 10 minutes before I walk into the pub. So it's a big plan thing. Yeah. And um, they're going to Skype me. Or FaceTime. It's all, yeah, FaceTime or whatever it is. And um, yeah, I'm literally going to be swigging a beer right behind behind him so that's going to freak him out I can't wait for that and for me I'm going to be left behind in Barnhill and my dad's actually flying up from Tassie to hang out with me while Chris is gone so really exciting yeah we both get to see family which we're freaking pumped about yeah. so anyway that's the case but we may have to we, I don't know depending on how the computer goes tonight it's having majors Major um, we may have to leave the van in Port Hedland and do a 1200 kilometer run up and back to Broome to pick up our new computer that Thankfully is Thankfully we ordered the new one a little while ago and it's waiting for us in Broome yeah. so cuz my computer has completely just gone Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But anyway, we Here are we chilling. We got the fire just cranked up ready for this afternoon for a couple of nice quiet drinks with our 
uh, beautiful friends that we've just met, beautiful people. Yeah. Um, excited about that. Um, I'm going to flick the drone up so you guys can see this gorgeous little place. Right. You. I've got to get back to my work. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I've been just sitting on the step of the caravan. It's Sunday, so he's watching motocross. I'm watching the motocross, obviously. Jet Lawrence, you're a freak, mate. The kid is a, I don't know, he's, he's he reminds me of me, mate, when I was younger, you know? Just you should so... be, you park next to us when it's Sunday. You just hear screams and whoops and wahoos and like swearing and all sorts of stuff because he's got his headphones on watching. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to flip the drone up. Check out this beautiful place. Once again for watching all the way to the end of the video this one was a little bit shorter and ideally they would all be about this length but I'm sure you're aware by now that um, our YouTube videos are actually about a few months behind where we are in real life and that is because we shoot so much content and it takes a little bit of time to edit them and put them together so if we were up to date we would be editing 24 hours a day and posting three videos a week and we wouldn't be able to shoot any more content so if you are actually looking for real life up-to-date um, daily information of what we're up to you'll find that on Facebook <laughs> but yeah YouTube is a few months behind so currently we're actually back in Brisbane and Chris is off doing very important things this morning so you've got me to announce our $50 winner and our $250 monthly winner so two winners this time which is a little bit exciting to enter all you have to do is drop a comment below telling us your favorite part of the video and then we select our favorite comments pretty much all right I'm gonna announce our $50 winner firstly this goes to Michael McRoberts 4398 another great video guys thanks for the fabulous content I feel like there was enough content in the one to kick off a new ADU segment probably quarterly but something like Miriam's graceful moments with ADU segment can be just Chris commenting with a beer over video shots of Miriam traversing walking trails <laughs> you could run two lots of comment polls first is what the favorite graceful moment was second for how many days Chris will be in the doghouse <laughs> very creative comment thank you so very much uh, Michael you have won yourself a $50 voucher all you have to do is get in contact with us and make sure you send us your email address and we will pass it on to the guys at Survival First Aid. And now it's time to announce our monthly $250 outdoor bundle winner, thanks to Survival First Aid. And that goes to, we wouldn't be dead for quids, 6005. Great name. This is a bit of a long comment, so settle in. Hi Miriam and Chris, Karen and I have just binge watched your Ballara Station and Karajini 1 and 2 episodes. We got a little behind. Anyway, they were excellent. Ballara brought back many happy memories from our lap in 2019. Miriam, over the years your editing has become so crisp it always leaves us wanting more of each sequence. Thank you. Chris, your presence in front of the camera which has developed over the lifetime of ADU is terrific. Chris says thank you. Uh, Miriam is a natural. We laugh so much watching the Kermit's pool entry and exit sequences. The choice of music is excellent, especially the track with the didgeridoo whilst walking into Joffrey Falls. Miriam, Karen felt your fear at the end of that ledge which can be seen in your face. She wouldn't have got that far. Well done you. Chris, you just asked about a place which made us go, ah, we found that place at the Garden of Eden on the Kings Can Canyon Rimwalk in 2022. For me, it was especially meaningful as just 12 months before, almost to the day I'd had coronary double bypass surgery. At 71, I'm guessing I won't be going into Kermit's pool or doing the handrail walk, but Karajini is on our bucket list for next year. Uh, we have the next two episodes at Karajini to go. We will binge them tomorrow. By the way, I love the comparison of the GoPro and the, GoPro and the DJI. The video quality and the sound of the DJI is next level. A short vid of your audio visual gear would be great. Stay safe 
and well and thank you Rob and Karen we wouldn't be dead for quits so congratulations you guys you've just won a $250 outdoor bundle thanks to survival first aid and once again thank you so much to everyone for watching our videos and supporting our channel if you could of course sub subscribe that would be amazing if you could give us a big thumbs up that would be doubly amazing and if you could leave a comment below that would be triply amazing and uh, give you a chance to win our survival first aid uh, $50 voucher next week and the $250 bundle for next month. So thanks again and I'll see you next time.